Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy Mega Meeple. Greetings and welcome to the Mega Meeple, the show all about gamers and the games that bring them together. This is episode 73. And yeah, yeah, we actually, uh, I think we're kind of starting to approach the time that we could start uh, thinking about the 100th episode. Hmm. What should we do on the episode? I, I know we did something special for episode 50. So what kind of things can uh, we do for episode 100? I don't know. Give, uh, give, me your, uh, give me your ideas. A real easy way to give me your ideas, and that is to go to the website, www.themegameeple.com. Go to the social media page, and all the links to all of our social media craps are right there. You can follow us and like us and interact with us. On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, uh, yeah, all, all that stuff. And if you haven't already, uh, mosey on over to iTunes and subscribe. And while you're there, put out some of that five-star loving. Leave us a happy review. It uh, helps us out a lot if you want to support the show. And it doesn't cost you a dime. Not even a penny. But... If you have a few pennies and you want to, like, toss them my way, you could do that, too. Uh, just go over to our Pop Pledge or Patreon page and uh, donate uh, over there. Or uh, coffee. I have a little coffee thing uh, going. If you want to, to buy me a, a, a extra grande, tall, whatever, whatever the hell the Starbucks things are. Because... Because after all, you know, staying up late, gaming, videotaping, reviewing, editing. Oh, God, I, I need caffeine in order to edit videos, please. So that's the only way I'm going to get through this. So if you want to help me out that way, uh, you know, I, have, I have a Kofi or how, how are you pronounce it? I know the link is there on the social media thing. So but uh, and uh, what, what else do I go? Uh, yeah, uh, so we have some... Uh, and the cool thing about the uh, Pop Pledge and Patreon thing is uh, you get some exclusive content, some advanced content, and some merch. Uh, stuff that uh, the, uh, the free listeners uh, just aren't going to be able to hear. Uh, we, have, uh, we have like the extended director's cut of all these episodes. Uh, you got to hear all the stuff that didn't make it into the final edit that uh, wound up on the editing room floor. So uh, if you want to find out a little bit more of uh, more content, uh, there's uh, there's some tiers and levels on the uh, Patreon and Pop Pledge that you could uh, do that. Uh, hell, even if you want to come on the podcast and uh, banter back and forth, uh, there's a level there for you to, to do that. But anyway, yeah, so if this is your first time listening, th welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping by. Now, my guest uh, this week is Trevor Heron, and he has a, uh, a game called Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, and he has a Kickstarter that just launched this, like, uh, hell, within 24 hours of this episode going live. So, uh, and it's for the, the, the expansion to that game. Uh, of course, we'll put a link to that in the show notes of this episode. But he's my guest today, and uh, he, he was actually nice enough to send me a review copy of the game. So we're going to have that uh, coming up soon on the YouTube channel. Uh, that's another thing. You can go over to the YouTube channel. The link is on the social media page, along with all the other links. And subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, and speaking of uh, YouTube, uh, if you've been following my segments for the Dice Tower Board Game Breakfast uh, the, for the month of October, I've been going over uh, each week my uh, favorite uh, Halloween theme board games to play on Halloween. Well, uh, if you go to the Mega Maple YouTube channel, 
uh, you will see. Uh, it's going to be uploaded very soon. It'll be, uh, well, it, it's going to be uploaded before Halloween. That's for darn sure. But uh, I had my top 10 horror themed board games to play on Halloween. And I even recommend a horror movie that you could watch to pair with each game. So go over to the YouTube channel. And uh, if it's if it's not uh, uploaded up there yet, uh, you know, if, if you get up there uh, before Halloween night, uh, it may or may not be uh, live on, on the channel yet, but it will be it will be going up on Halloween. But uh, while you're there, uh, make, make sure you're subscribed. And that way, when it does get uploaded, as well as all the uh, reviews to, uh, like, for example, my review of Affectionate cu- uh, Cats and Cuddles, when that goes up, uh, I have a review coming out of uh, Wargen coming up. Uh, we have a, a review of a Tiny Epic Zombies coming up. Sometime in uh, early December, I have a review of uh, the gaming table that I have. Uh, yeah, that's going to be an interesting review. <laughs> we'll see how that comes across and how well that balloon flies over. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, so that that's going to be a uh, make sure you subscribe so that way you will be notified when all those videos go live. Well, before we get to our guest, uh, I uh, we got to talk one of the, the I, I'm not I don't do much of a like the news thing. I mean, Dice Tower News and a whole bunch of other people do news. Uh, other than, you know, maybe I'll, I'll tweet something out or share something on a Facebook page or something like that as far as newsworthy uh or articles or stuff like that but I, I i don't cover too much of news here because you know there's a bunch of other people do that but i gotta talk about one thing that i'm really excited about and that is uh I, i'll link uh the article and the show notes here so you can go and read up on that but it looks like uh mice and mystics this might get a animated full-length movie cool I mean, I always liked my and Mystics. I've I've even played uh, that game solo a few times. Uh, I just like the storybook aspect of it, and and that's that's probably one of the reasons why they're they're developing it for a animated movie is just that the the storybook aspect of it it it, it just lends itself well to a movie uh, format. Uh, makes me wonder if maybe Stuffed Fables might be. Uh, <laughs> Might get a green light at some point, uh, just because uh, just how that game is kind of, you know, uh, presented uh, in a storybook form. But yeah, Mice and Mystics, the cute little critters of Mice and Mystics will be, uh, uh, as I understand it, it's under development. But I mean, I kind of take that with a grain of salt because, uh, you know, if there's anything I've learned about TV entertainment and stuff like that is uh it, it's really really fickle just because something's in the, or has been announced doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna you know actually be so i'm i'm kind of i'm excited but that that excitement is tempered right now uh but i will definitely be uh, uh following this story and uh, just 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 tell me an actual release date. Tell me what weekend uh, this movie is going to come out. Then I'll get it. I'll, then I'll get really excited. I mean, I, I will be right. I would be on Fandango buying my ticket right away. Yeah. So Mice and Mystics, the movie. That, that'll be that'll be neat. And talking about cute little critters. I don't know if cats are critters, but, you know, it's just. Uh, well, let's go to our, our uh, my guest this week, Trevor Heron, talking about affectionate cats and cuddles. Welcome back to the Mega Meeple. And uh, every, uh, if you're, you're like me, uh, you're a cat person. I like cats. Uh, 
I I used I used to like dogs, but uh, I had one. My roommate had one dog one time, and uh, I we moved into his apartment, and uh, the the dog came into my bedroom and promptly urinated uh, on my carpet. So at that point on, I was like, yeah, there's a lot to say about cats. So <laughs> I was a cat person from that point on. So, but we have a, a, a game and a game designer uh, with us uh, this episode uh, for a game all about cats. And no, it's not Cat Lady. Uh, it's... Uh, Actually, there's one or two other cat games out there, but th this is another one. So this is uh, kind of for just in time for the stocking stuffers for Christmas. If you're looking for something to the the the, the bag this game comes in is just just the right size to put in your stocking stuffers for cr this Christmas. So what we we have uh, Trevor Heron from uh, Blue Heron Entertainment. How you doing, Trevor? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you for for coming on. I appreciate it very much. So we're we're talking about a uh, game that you have called Affectionate Cats and Cuddles. Yes. So I initially designed Affectionate Cats and Cuddles, which is a super sweet game about cats being sweet, and I designed it actually in loving memory of a cat that I had, uh, Moku, who was. He was not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but all he wanted to do was to be loved and to let you know that he loved you and that you should pet him and that he was the happiest thing on earth. And so he unfortunately passed away, and I wanted to make a game that was as sweet as he was, but also simple enough that even he could play it. Okay. And thus, Affectionate Cats and Cuddles was born. All right. So we're we're definitely not talking about a cat that was sort of like that stereotypical Garfield, where he's like kind of aloof. And was, no, this was a very uh, as, he was as, as the name implies uh, a very affectionate cat. Oh yes, he he was a cat on a mission. He knew exactly what he wanted, and that was to be in someone's lap and purring. Excellent. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, there there's there is so much to say about. Uh, the family member. I mean, when you when you have a pet, mm -hmm. I mean, that that is that is so much part of the family. So uh, and they're. Uh, I mean, each one, even if you have uh, multiple ones, each one has their own little personality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's uh, yeah, you, you can't help but to to love on those things and uh, just mm -hmm. consider them as as part of the part of the family. So, absolutely, and that's. That's part of the reason I made this game and specifically made it a family-friendly game so that everyone at the table can find something to, en something to enjoy. Now, what's, what's, uh, what, what would you say would be a good uh, starting age for Affectionate Cats and Cuddles? The, a, a good starting age for Affectionate Cats and Cuddles would typically be around, with proper adult supervision, four or five, though I have seen children as young as two or three like pick up the game and understand what's going on it's a simple roll dice see what pair what combination of dice you have and you take the action based on those dice and kids can pick it up quickly family parents can like say oh look you have two you've rolled two hearts which means you take two hearts from the middle and the premise is simple that you want the most hearts cuddle tokens they're called by the time there are none left in the middle so it's a very clear game that children can easily pick up as as i said as young as three but definitely seven five eight wide range of children if you have multiple multiple children or just one and it's uh, three at the table yeah i i know uh, as i i was playing it uh i would say that yeah this is uh this would be great for children. I mean, I, I think really the only uh, critical thing is, you know, uh, it, it is dealing with dice. It has uh, some tokens, stuff like that. So uh, if uh, the, the younger the child, the, the more, I guess, uh, uh, <laughs> more direct parental guidance you're going to have to do to make sure that the, your, uh, that your one, little one doesn't uh, 
eat eat the uh, the tokens and dice and stuff. Exactly, and and, and even with with prefacing the want for parental supervision I, I specifically designed the pieces with the idea that there are going to be children playing this game for instance uh, I'm, I'm being silly and holding up one of the pieces right now but the heart has a heart-shaped hole in the middle and the same sort of idea of, of a lifesaver having the hole in the center of the candy just trying to make sure that the game is as safe as possible but Make sure you don't stick anything in your mouth that you shouldn't be. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, okay. I know I've had to tell my cats that a couple of times. Yes. So, so this is a uh, so you're, you're you're trying to get, be the most affectionate cat uh, to get mm-hmm. the most cuddles. Uh, so I, I, I'm I'm assuming there is there's no like uh, brownie points for like uh, uh, knocking glasses off of tables or anything oh, like that. No. Oh, no, so, no, are no. Are those like negative there, points afterwards? Well, the, the points are, are the, the cuddle tokens, the embodiments of the infect, affection. And with, with each cat die, each player has two, and each cat die has, one of, has three different symbols on it. A human, a paw, and a heart. The, the hearts are generally good things like taking cuddle tokens from the middle. The humans, eh, sometimes you're bothering them, and so they are more mixed. And then the paws, well, that's when the glass knocking happens because if a human catches you scratching the furniture or knocking a glass off, i.e. a human and a paw, you have to lose a cuddle token back to the middle. So it's a it's a game about sort of showing showing... There are these positive aspects, and you want these sorts of roles, but maybe not these sorts of roles. And you can even do re-rolls at, di- at certain times. And it's, it's a real teaching moment of like, no, 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 you want to do a re-roll at this time because you rolled this thing. Do you want this thing? And then have the child say no. And it's like, well, if you do this, then you can do this. And they start learning that this is something I can do. This is something I can try to strategize around. Even at a young age, kids pick up on that really quickly and uh one of the cool things i like about and you even uh uh, point this out in the directions in in the game is like okay Mm -hmm. when you you roll the dice everybody has to say ready three two one meow (laughs) everybody rolls their dice on on the word meow so it, it it's I mean, right off the bat, it's it's getting the kids uh, just involved and uh, j- just have yeah, you know, just having fun. <laughs> Get the Ex- game exactly, and and that and that was part of designing this game. Since I initially designed the core cons, the core mechanics, as I was waiting to demo actually another game that I've created, and what I realized was if you everyone's rolling at the same time, everyone's involved. You don't have any downtime between turns. It's something that is contained enough that you can play it like in a diner or like before Thanksgiving di- dinner or before Christmas dinner. So like it's it's contained enough and it brings everyone to the table so that no one's checking their phone off to the side or what or whatnot. Right now. Now. Uh, so let, let's be- before we get into now the, the Kickstarter is for uh, actually for the uh, expansion to Affection of Cats and Cuddles called. It's, yes. It's treat time. Yes. <laughs> uh, b- before we get into to the actual Kickstarter and expansion, let's uh, for those out there who have uh, not heard of this game or uh, you know not familiar with it, uh, let's go back to the beginning and uh, describe uh, just the mechanics and how the game plays of the the uh, the, the the first edition of Affection of Cats mm-hmm. and Cuddles. Of course, and so the basic the basic first edition of Affection at Cats and Cuddles is a simple. Roll dice, take action game, where play, every player rolls their dice at the same time. If it sees what they roll, and they take that take that action. Now, I mentioned before that there's an opportunity for re rolls, and that's with the use of silly tokens. And these silly tokens can either be used to force another player to re roll or to re roll your own dice. And those are gained through the through a particular dice dice roll in the game where you are a sweet cat symbolized by a heart and a paw 
and a paw and a mischievous cat, you were doing something silly that like the humans you got, we don't want the cat to do like sleep in the sock drawer, but it's adorable. Uh-huh. You're not going to reprimand them for that. You're just going to pick them up, pet them and let them go on their way from there. And so the game continues until there are no more cuddle tokens in the middle. Now, Throughout the game, players will be rolling their dice, taking cuddle tokens out of the middle, putting cuddle tokens back, depending on what they roll, or even stealing from each other, which brings me to another die, which has not been mentioned yet, called the human die, which either shows a happy human or a sad human. If the human is happy, players can take two cuddle tokens from anywhere, and if the human is sad, they have to give one to another player. So... All in all, it, this is a game all about rolling dice and reinforcing cuddles, positivity, with a little bit of mischief in there. But at its very core is you want the most cuddles by the time there are none left, and you roll dice to get those cuddles. Okay. That's mm-hmm. uh, pr- pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Absolutely. After a straightforward, simple cat. If people get the, uh, the expansion, are they – I mean, they're still able to play – the the core game the the same oh. as they always have right oh absolutely the what the expansion adds is a a few ga- game aids called cat mats which basically are well they are cats that I, that my family and I have had in my my life continuing the theme of there's this cat that was the inspiration and so these cat mats can be used in the base game to place your dice on so that you can more clearly see your roll if you want. And it does not and it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you can't play the base game anymore. No, 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 no. The expansion is purely additive onto the base game. So it is there if you want to do it. It goes into the same bag, but you do not need to play it to have a good time or have to do any extra work to play with someone who may not be ready for the expansion. Okay. So let's talk about uh, treat time and what, what does that add to the game and how does, does that uh, does it add, I think it adds like a, another mechanic? Mm-hmm. So it's treat time. The expansion adds two ways to play affectionate. The first being the advanced rule set, which you can play by, with with everything that's currently in the bag, but the expansion adds the aforementioned cat mats to help organize the game. And that advanced version adds dice drafting. And for those listeners maybe unfamiliar with what dice drafting is, everyone rolls their dice at the same time, chooses one of their own die to hold on to, and then from the remaining set of dice, in turn order, pick the other die to build the action that they will be that they will be doing. So it adds a little bit of strategic complexity. The expansion, its treat time, builds upon that, adding worker placement. Now, I can already hear some people potentially furiously typing in some comment section, how can worker placement be simple? The answer is, everyone has one cat pawn. And that cat pawn can get placed onto a cat mat to do that action. On every, and that is in reverse order. So in turn order, you draft the dice, but in reverse turn order, you, play, you actually choose which action you're going to do, meaning that all of a sudden, you have to more strategically build your action depending on what you think other people are going to choose on that turn. So it adds worker placement as a mechanic and is a way to teach people kids, people unfamiliar with Euro games, more complex mechanics that can lead into bigger and more complex games. Lends itself a game that a child is able to grow up with. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. And that was and that was part of the point of of the It's Street Time expansion, since I've been working on Affectionate for about a year and a half and the expansion for it for about that time. And what I noticed was that a number of conventions in which I showed affectionate, lots of little kids love to play it. And then if, the, if say, a seven-year-old had a 12-year-old um, older brother or sister, 
they would enjoy it because they were spending time with their with the younger brother and sister, but they would want something more. Mm -hmm. And so I developed the expansion so that you could start to incorporate families with a broader age range and maturity in gameplay to still enjoy what is a simple light filler game. So we got the uh, the Kickstarter. The, now the uh, mm -hmm. first edition, uh, as we uh, said, is going to be uh, uh, delivered by uh, Christmas of this year, 2018. There, uh, there are rewards for that, but they are limited. I, okay. Sorry to interject there, but there are only 500 of those available due to the supply of the first edition that we currently have. Okay. Right. And if we need to print more, we absolutely will. We want to make sure everyone gets the base game as well as the expansion. Okay. But it's one of those things that the, the expansion will come uh, 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 not too much, you know, uh, longer, you know, uh, maybe a few, few months or so after the uh, first edition, right? Yep, that's the idea. Okay. All right. Now, what, uh, what are the, uh, the, the, the dates of the uh, Kickstarter? So the Kickstarter starts on October 28th, uh, 2018, and will run into uh, late, late November, uh, just in time for the start of PAX, Un PAX Unplugged, mm -hmm. which I, Blue Heron Entertainment will also be there. So if you are there, you can say hi to me and even play a game of affectionate there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, uh, well, thank you so much, Trevor, for uh, for coming on. Now, if people want to find out more about, uh, I mean, we'll we'll have the uh, the link to the Kickstarter on the the show notes of this episode. But if uh, people mm -hmm. want to find out about you as a designer, or even uh, Blue uh, Heron Entertainment, where where could they go? Well, they can go to blueherongames.com. That is all in one word, no hyphens. That's uh, blue. Just like the color, Heron, just like the bird, and games, well, we all love to play. All right. Excellent. And again, we'll have uh, <laughs> links to those things on the show notes. Mm -hmm. Well, Trevor, uh, yeah, if you, uh, thank you so much. Now, if, if you don't mind, we like to play like a little game with all of our guests uh, before Ooh. we let them go. Uh, we just mm -hmm. call it the, uh, the Mega Meeple uh, Rapid Fire Round. All right. And uh, I'll say like uh, either uh, – I'll say – Cats or dogs, and you'll pick one. But I think I, I, I won't give you that one because I think that answer is pretty obvious. <laughs> it's a little obvious, isn't it? <laughs> so, alrighty, okay, ready? Mm -hmm. You got uh, Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead? Uh, Game of Thrones. I absolutely love it, and it has a good parallels with actual history. Uh, okay. Uh, now, Kirk or Picard. Mm. I grew up watching a lot more Picard, so I would have to go with Picard. Okay. Now, uh, Yoda or Obi Wan? Mm. That's a tough one. I think I personally think Obi Wan got a bit of the short end of the stick, so I have to go with him. Okay. And next, uh, sausage or bacon? Ooh. Now. I have to ask: Is it a good old American bacon or something like Canadian bacon? Uh, let's let's go with Canadian bacon. <laughs> then it has to be sausage. Okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> all right. And last one: Sesame Street or Mister Rogers? Oh, God! You saved the hardest for last. <laughs> oh, I love both of them. I think, you know, I love Mister Rogers, but. I, I distinctly remember sitting down with my family when I was a kid and watching Sesame Street, so I have to go with that, Sesame Street. All right. Well, Trevor, thank you so much for being with us, and uh, uh, affectionate Cats and Cuddles and its expansion, it's treat time. So check that out on Kickstarter. Is there is there a cat player? Can cats play? I don't know if we could ever... I I think cats can play, and I have had several people send me photos of their cats intention, intensely learning the rules okay. next to their humans. All right. So <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a – I don't know. I, I would think that a lot of cats would be sort of like the, the rules lawyers out there, that they would uh, be correcting our humans. <laughs> the, hey, 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 you, you played that wrong. 
Oh, they might they might they might be the rules lawyer, but they might be that rules lawyer that rules lawyers when it's in their in their favor. Hey, yeah. <laughs> they'll take that. They'll take that one rule and they'll stretch it out to uh, at, to the maximum uh, benefit to to, to them. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, that depends on the cat. Yeah. All right. All uh, right. Trevor, thank you so much. And uh, again, uh, check out Affectionate Cats and Cuddles and It's Tree Time. Well, thank you very much for having me on. All right. Thank you so much for smashing that download button and listening to this week's episode. Uh, you want to come back next week, as my guest will be John Maiden talking about Panjango. This is this is a pretty interesting uh, game. Uh, it is uh, not only uh, what's specifically for uh, families, uh, but it also could be used and implemented in uh, schools. I, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it, it's it's a game to help children get a sense of what the world uh, is uh, has in store for them as far as work and careers so you definitely want to come back next week to hear all the ins and outs of that again thank you so much for listening uh, again follow us uh, on our social media stuff the links are found on the website www.themegameeple.com Go to our YouTube channel to uh, see our top 10 of uh, horror-themed games to play on Halloween. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes. If you want to support uh, the show, we have the Pod Pledge and Patreon pages. And then uh, if, if you're not able to do that, there's, there's one way that you can really help the show and support the show, and that is just word of mouth. Tell your friends about it. Word of mouth goes a long, long way, and it doesn't cost you a dime. So thank you so much for listening. Appreciate your listenership and and your loyalty. Uh, And as we uh, start to uh, gear up for episode 100 here pretty soon. But thanks so much for joining me. And I will see you next week at the Mega Meeple Gaming Table. So have a safe and happy Halloween. (laughs) 